Hey guys, it's Double O Negative, and today I'm going to be making a video on how to set up and use this Revival Games plugin. So, I have a local server set up here with nothing on it except for World Edit, which is required in order to use the plugin. So, I'm on the download page, and I'm going to download the latest version from the download link. Maybe. Here we go. Alright, open that up, and you'll see a folder called Survival Games. B0.4.8, and inside it you'll see the web stats folder and the survival games jar. We want to take the the jar file and put it into our plugins folder. Okay, so now that's in the plugins folder. Now what you want to do is start up their server. Maybe. Here we go. Got to create all the world files and everything. Almost there. Okay. So now it started up, and you'll see there's a problem right now, and that's because there's no settings. So now you want to turn off your server again. So stop. And you will see in the plugins folder there's a folder called survival games. So you want to open up your config.yml and I'll actually be showing how to use this with both SQL and without SQL. Um, so first off I'm going to do it without. So to do this we're going to want to set logging use SQL to false and we want to set stats enabled to false this will disable all SQL use in the plugin so now you can configure everything else you want um, auto start players auto start time everything dislog commands grace period anything you want so now we're going to start the server back up and I'm going to start up Minecraft. <laughs> I'm going to start up two Minecrafts. Alright, so login. Login. <laughs> and things are being slow. Now I'm going to connect to the local server. I'm just going to log on to a different account. Alright. Oops. Okay. So now we are on the server, and if the FPS is bad, it's because I'm trying to record this with Cam Studio, and it doesn't always like games. Alright, so the first thing we want to do, we want to make our lobby wall. So give Recommended size for the wall, the minimum size that is. You can make it as big as you want, but the recommended minimum size is three by five. Let's 
So I'm gonna make it three by five. And now I keep forgetting I don't have essentials on here. Uh, get signs. Actually, probably be easier if I used world edit to do this. Set sign. And this is just kind of a guessing. Decide which way it is. Nope. There we go. All right. So now we're gonna run a command, and all commands with survival games. You can either use slash sg, slash s, or hg, slash survival games, or slash hunger games. And they all work the same, but I like to use this slash sg command. So I'm going to do slash sg set lobby wall. And you should see the little animation play. Um, it's a little bit messed up because I think I made it. Yeah, I made it six. You want to make it an odd amount of signs, so actually I'm going to redo this real fast and run the command again. Now it's better. Okay, so you'll see in the top left it says no arenas because we haven't set up any arenas yet. But before we set up an arena, we're going to, want to do a command to set our lobby spawn point. So to do this, we're going to do slash sg set lobby spawn oops oh, I misspelled lobby set lobby spawn alright so now our lobby spawn point is set and I'm actually okay so now that that's set we can start setting up our arenas and I'm just going to set up an arena in this area here just to make it simple. Um, probably I'm going to want some chest around this arena so I can demonstrate the automatic chest filling. So I'm going to get some chest. Just place chest there. Place chest there. Place chest there. Place chest there. there. Alright, so now what I'm going to want to do. I'm going to want to select all the area in this. Position 1. With world out, we want to select the entire arena. And you want to make sure you get all the arena selected so it rolls back, refills chest, does all that stuff. Position 2. Spin. Burnt. Alright. So now we want to run the, run the command slash so sg create arena. And this will create arena 1. And as you can see, the signs have updated. And we now have arena one on the signs. So the next thing we want to do is let's set our spawn points. And there's two ways you can do this. You can set each one individually, or you can use the command slash sg set spawn next, and it'll set the next spawn point. Alternatively, you can use set spawn one, two, all that stuff. So I'm just gonna use next. Set spawn one, set spawn two. So it's spawn three and so on. All right. So now that our spawns are set, we have everything set up to go, and you can create as many arenas as you want, put as many spawn points as you want, all that stuff. So now that all the spawns are set up and everything, the next thing we want to do, there's click the sign that says click to join arena one. Yep. Let's try that again. So the command to leave the game is slash sg leave. All right. Let's try this without a sign this time. Too many signs. All right, click it, and yeah. So now you go to the first spawn point. Now I'm gonna open this up in another Minecraft. All right, click it here. So now we got two people in game. So now there's two many ways the game can start. Um, it can start if the ma uh, amount of players in game reaches the auto start players. So we're not going to get 20 people in the game, obviously, because I don't have, can't run 20 Minecrafts at once. Um, the auto start vote is above 75%. Now, what the auto start vote is, is players can use slash sg vote, and it'll vote to start the game. 
So now, if more than 75% of the people in the game do it, the game will start. And you should see... Oh wait, actually there has to be more than three people in game for this to happen. So that's not going to happen right now. So anyways, the command for admins, or people you want to give the command, you can use slash sg start. And this will start the game. You can all use, there's many other ways you can do it. You can just like sg start arena id. So like if you want to start the game remotely, you can use like arena id 1, that'll start game 1. And you can also add the amount of seconds you want it starting on the end. So the game's already started. So see now we have a 20 second grace period. And this means you can't hurt other players. Players can't hurt you, but you can go around, find chests and things. So the chest will fill automatically with random items, depending on what you have in your chest.yml file, which I'll show you later. But all the chests fill up randomly. So I got a sword. Some um, armor. Food. And this is just going by the default config right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on and go up here and kill. Now, if there's more people in the game, there's the setting in game somewhere. In game players three. So this means if there's three people left in the game, let's say we had five people left or five people to start a game. And two people were killed, so there's three people left. Now there's a setting called fire lightning, and what this does is when there's below this set amount of players, it starts shooting lightning near the player's head. So it'll shoot like lightning like right here. And what this will do, this will help players find each other while they're in game. Um, and also, you'll notice that only certain blocks are able to be destroyed. This is also configurable in your config. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the other player in game. And this will end the game. Alright, so see the game has ended, I won. Um, and all of the things have rolled back. See the grass block I destroyed, the flowers I destroyed, everything has rolled back. So, next time I go to join, just click the sign again. And you can do the same thing over and over again. It's all automatic, does it automatically. So that's how to set up your games, how to run the games, um, all that. So now I'm going to show you some of the configuration files and how to use SQL if you want to use SQL. Um, the auto start players, let's change this to 2 so I can demonstrate that. Um, auto start time, we'll set this to 5. Um, grace period, we'll set this to 5 seconds also. Um, and what, oh, here's another cool thing. Um, Enable Q option. What this does is let's say there's a game running. Can't do it right now because well I can okay. I'll go ahead and show you some admin commands. There's SG disable. This by itself will disable all arenas. So we've only got one arena right now, so it's just gonna disable this arena. Um my mouse is actually dying. Alright. Um SG enable will re enable the arenas. Um, you can use SG disable 1 to disable a certain arena, and SG enable 1 to re enable that arena. So, I can actually demonstrate the queue by disabling the arena. And what happens is when either a game is running or is disabled, you can, when cl players click the signs, they will join the queue to join the next time the game is open. So, I'm number two in line on the queue, and the other account is number one. So when I do slash sg enable one, we automatically join the game, because the game is now ready for players to join. Alright, so I actually need to reload the server um, to demonstrate uh, the new settings. So I'm going to go ahead and reload. And on reload, the games automatically disable and all roll back, so you won't have to worry about disabling games, making sure people are out, all that stuff. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and join the game now. Actually, I'm not entirely sure this is going to save because I might have to have the server turned off. I don't know exactly. 
Alright, no, dead dude. Yeah, it didn't save. Alright, so I need to stop the server. Okay, turn on auto join. Oh, I also. It's probably because I didn't save the config. Oh. Uh, here we go. Start the server back up. Yeah, it should save that. I just hadn't actually saved the config. Probably isn't nearly all my RAM, yeah. So it's gonna be a little bit slow. Alright, so now I'm back in the game. Okay, so now when we have. I've set the player automatic start limit to 2. So now when two people join the game, you see it automatically starts because there's above the limit and it started at 5 seconds instead of 20. Now also the grace period is at 5 seconds now. So you can configure how long all that stuff lasts for. So the grace period is ended. I'm going to go ahead and kill this guy. Blah, 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 blah. All right. So oh, another thing, when somebody dies, it shoots lightning so that acts like a cannon. So it's just like in the actual horror games, you hear the cannon when somebody dies. Another thing, unless the arena is disabled, people not in game cannot destroy any blocks. So you cannot edit arenas unless you're, the arena is disabled. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. SG disable one. Now I'm going to be able to edit the arenas, change all the stuff I want, do all that stuff. My inventory is full. Alright, so now I'm going to re enable it. And you can't edit stuff again. Alright. So now I'm going to show you how to set up SQL. Um, there's sites out there that allow you to use, um, as have free SQL databases. Um, I'm not sure how good they are. People have been reporting problems with them. But if you have a hosting service, you can usually request an SQL database. Um, if you're on a dedicated server, obviously you can have SQL. Virtual um, VPS servers, or you're running it locally like me. So, what I have, I have a program called um, Announce Dad again. I need to replace the battery. Mouse uh, keeps dying. There it goes. Alright, it's called Womp Server, and it's a Windows program. Refresh the loading up. Alright. So I'm going to do start PHP my admin. I'm going to create a database. And this is going to open up actual. Actually, I'm going to open this up in a different program yeah cuz for some reason it's keeping the settings to another database I was connected to and it's saying I don't have permission to create a new one which I do so I'm gonna use a different browser real fast let's open up everything's all slow opening cuz I'm recording have like tons of stuff open alright here we go open up PHP my admin Google Chrome startup. <laughs> Why is it loading so slowly? Oh, this is normally faster. Anyways, while this is loading, since it seems to be taking a while, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up your stats. So, I'm going to open up my local directory. And I'm going to create a folder. Everything's getting all laggy. New folder. I'm going to call it Survival Games. Ooh. Great. 
Okay, here we go. And now I'm going to put the folder, the web stats folder. Now this is on a web server. So this needs to be on your actual website. This doesn't go on your plugins folder or any of that stuff. So I have this open up already here. So I'm going to copy the web stats folder and put it into here. So this means that I'm going to have on my website, I'm going to go to slash survival game slash web stats, and that's going to take me to my web stats. Now, I need to set up a database for this. Here we go, finally. All right, creating a database. I'm going to call it survival games. Create. Now, I'm not going to do anything after that. That's all I need to do is just create that. So, now, to use this, we're going to go ahead and stop the server. Because we're going to need to set up our SQL stuff. Um, we're going to want to go to our config file, and we're going to set up our SQL settings. So, our host is localhost, because it's running off my computer, so it's localhost. Port, the default SQL port is 3306, so that's going to stay the same. My user is root, because that's just the default. Uh, no password. Database is survival games, except it's capitalized and the prefix unless you know what prefix is you usually don't have to worry about it um, this is for like if you want uh, multiple instances running on the same database you can set a prefix to the database um, tables so they don't get confused together alright so now that that's set up we're going to enable stats we're going to set this to true and we're going to save it and now we're going to restart our server. Alright, let that start up. Now, while that's starting up, we're going to configure our web stats database settings. So there's a file called dbcon.php. And in this, we'll see similar settings to what's on the server. So we want it to be exactly the same that we see right here. So most of it is, we just got to change the capitalization of it. Save that. And now you can go to your web address. Mine just localhost slash survival oops. Survival slash web stats. And we'll see there's nothing here yet. Zero games and played by zero players who play zero times for a total of zero days and playing time total of zero points. Alright. Um, so now this is started up. Go ahead and rejoin and play a game of stats on it. So, go ahead and join the game, starting up. There's chests are filled in real time when the first person opens it, so they're not filled before game, so people open the chest before game it won't affect them. Alright. So now, I'm actually going to go ahead and kill him. Alright, so now the web stats have been enabled. So now if I refresh the web stats page, you will see there's stats on here. So I got 300 points for killing, for winning the game, and 10 points for the kill. So you can click on the person's name, you'll see their skin. You should see their skin. Um, I'm not sure what's up with that. Anyways, it might just be because I'm doing a local host. But you see their time in game, you see all their stats here, and then you can click on the players, see per game stats, who they killed, time in game, their win loss percent, all that stuff. You can click game history, and this will show each individual game. You can search for players, and then down here you see a combined stats. One game has been played by two players, played two times, for, um, total of zero days, and 310 points. So. That's basically it on that. If you want to use SQL for logging, it's only really necessary if you have a server with a really small amount of RAM or something. Um, it'll be faster if you don't use SQL for logging. It's almost it's pretty much recommended you don't use SQL for logging unless um, you're really worried about RAM usage. It uses about one extra megabyte of RAM for saving it into memory instead of logging to an SQL database and it'll be much faster so unless you're running like 120 megabyte RAM go ahead and use just don't enable SQL or if you're 
like enabling all blocks to be broken or something. You might as well just not use SQL for logging. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, you can set all the custom messages for kill streaks. Um, kill streaks are when you kill somebody plays or kills somebody within 15 seconds of the last kill. So if they kill two people within 15 seconds, um, it'll be a double kill. Um, three people, with another person within 15 seconds, it'll be multi kill and so on. And you can set all the messages, all that. You can set the points um, for stats and say which blocks can be broke, placed. Um, oh, also, chest, you can set if you want chest to be automatically restocked if, on the first night. Um, this will just restock chest. The only thing about this, having this enabled, is when the game starts, it sets the time of the world to morning. So if you're using the survival games in the same world as like a survival server, you might want to disable that just because you don't want the time changing all the time. Um, I think that's pretty much it.